Uh, for the, the time I allocated for the Dhamma talk is how long normally? Um, well, you could do an, anything between half an hour, 30 minutes and 40 minutes. Okay. But it, it's really, it's really up to you, Bante. Um, we're, we're always happy to hear what you hear your teachings and, uh, you know, we're very grateful for um, whatever we, <laughs> you have to say, so, and I'm sure people will have um, some questions for you, so. Um, so it's 7.30 now, so I'd like to welcome everybody to the Ottawa Buddhist Society Friday evening meeting. And um, it's our very great pleasure to welcome Bhante Rahula. And Bhante Rahula is the resident monk at the Lion of Wisdom Meditation Center in Maryland, uh, United States. And we've known Bhante Rahula for many years, and he's um, been a very regular consistent teacher to the Ottawa Buddhist Society and sometimes he comes up to Ottawa to um, teach a retreat and I think that you're due to come up in November and teach a five-day retreat at the Galilee Centre so we'll all be looking forward very much to seeing you in person then and, you know, just to mention that Bhante Rahula ordained in originally in Sri Lanka and, um, and then took his full ordination in Los Angeles, US. And so he's mainly divided his time between Sri Lanka and the United States. And he was resident at the Bhavana Society in West Virginia um, with Bhante Gunaratna for many years. And um, um, anyway, we, we always very much appreciate um, your teachings, Bante, and we're very grateful that you can be with us for these events this evening and tomorrow for the Day of Mindfulness. So I'll hand it over to you. I think you you're you're muted, Bante. Okay. Well, thank you, thank you for your introduction, and uh, I'm always, uh, you know, it's my pleasure to be able to share Dhamma with the Auto Buddhist uh, Society, as you mentioned. Uh, I've been coming there for uh, a long period of time. So, uh, then. Uh, do you normally want to start with some uh, chanting or not? Um, again, of course, it's up to you, Bante. Um, I have down that you do the three refuges. Um, and is that a, I think that's a chant, yes? Well, normally yeah. for my own uh, uh, Wednesday night class, we start with uh, just chanting the Namo Tassa three times, followed by the three refuges. Yes. Uh, if any of you would like to join, uh, then I, I'll uh, do that. And you can join on your own at, at the home if, if you like, or just to, uh, to listen, contemplate the, you know, the meaning of it. Okay? That sounds very good, Vante. Thank you. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Buddham Saranangachami Dhammam Saranangachami 
Sangam saranam gacchami Yutiyampi buddham saranam gacchami Yutiyampi dhammam saranam gacchami Yutiyampi sangam saranam gacchami Tatiyampi buddham saranam gacchami Tatiyampi dhammam saranam gacchami Tatiyampi sangam saranam gacchami So, uh, Welcome, Dhamma friends, those in the Auto Buddhist Society, and those who are tuning in over Zoom from uh, our own uh, mailing list. It looks like there's a mix of uh, people from both of those. So, uh, so this evening, uh, I wanted to to give some reflections or some uh, on the the middle path, the meaning of the middle path. Of course, we all know that the, the teachings of the Dhamma are also called the middle path. And even in the, in the first sermon of the Buddha, uh, you know, the, the first sermon that the Buddha gave to the first five ascetics is what he meant uh, is when he started out, we're saying this is the, the middle path between uh, indulging in sensual pleasures and desires and the opposite of denying yourself any type of uh, uh, sensual pleasure or uh, pleasurable feeling. Uh, and, and then he goes on to say basically that the, the Noble Eightfold Path is the middle path, uh, starting with the right understanding. Now, so uh, it means basically avoiding the extremes. Uh, and there are uh, so two levels of sort of that understanding, or I like to say there's you know, two levels of the middle path. There's the external middle path and the internal middle path. And the external middle path would be the, you know, uh, the world around us or the six senses, the objects of the six senses, things that we see, hear, smell, taste, feel with the body, and even think with our mind. And everything that we experience normally, uh, we have you know, broken up the world into these things I like and desire, these certain things bring me uh, pleasure and that I like. So things that we see, hear, taste, smell, touch, and even think about. And then the opposites, things that bring us uh, pain, or people, uh, things that bring us unpleasant feelings. And these are also the same objects of the senses, including our own uh, thoughts. So we all have, and the things that we like and desire, of course, that's what we develop strong attachments to and cravings for. And then we, are, are much of our life, if not <laughs> most of it, is spent in uh, how can we continue to uh, have pleasant feelings in the search for pleasant feeling. So we like to eat the foods that bring us a pleasant feeling, hear the music or sounds that bring us pleasurable feelings, smells, tastes, again, uh, bodily sensations, and even our thoughts. And uh, again, to avoid uh, the unpleasant things. And if we really check up, most of our life is spent in a constant back and forth between, uh, you know, searching out for uh, the pleasurable feelings that we don't have, trying to create them or plan how are we going to uh, get these pleasurable feelings. 
and the fear and worry about getting uh, painful feelings, such as, of course, <laughs> you know, when people starting getting old, you start to worry about, you know, getting old and the pains and the various sufferings or diseases that may come with that, losing your hearing or the eyesight or your strength and, and so on. So a lot of worry uh, goes on toward that. And to get away from those unpleasant feelings, we seek out uh, pleasurable feelings. So this is, uh, you know, occupies most of people's life, and it also what increases our desires and aversions. And most of our karma is created uh, in pursuing that. So we're very much fluctuating between these uh, extremes, and. Uh, you know, we create the karma based on that, especially if you don't have the means to gain a pleasurable feeling uh, in a, you know, a lawful ways. People might resort to extremes uh, like, you know, taking drugs or alcohol or, you know, abusing others or telling lies and, you know, wrong speech and and actions, uh, a lot of that is based on our uh, trying to, uh, you know, indulge our uh, sense desires. And also to get away from the painful uh, feelings. So anyway, so the, you know, the middle path that the Buddha taught is, you know, the, in the uh, Eightfold Path, the practice of Sila, Samadhi, and Panya. It's a way of balancing the mind within that uh, that that uh, syndrome or that uh, that constant uh, tug of war between an obstacle course between uh, trying to gain some pleasure out of this world and at the same time trying to mitigate or staying away from the painful feelings. But anyway, so that's uh, very much connected to the uh, you know the the external world. Now, the, the other aspect of the middle path is the, the, inner, the inner middle path. And that basically is the practice of mindfulness. And, and actually, the, <clears throat> I like the word, you know, meditation in English, although it's a, uh, it's a word, it's a translation of the Pali word for meditation, which is bhavana. Uh, but it's interesting that in English, they translated the bhavana as meditation. And that starts with M-E-D-I. And, and what other words start with M-E-D-I? Well, there's medicine, there's mediation, there's media, and there's mediocre, and there are probably some other words, but uh, those are the ones that, uh, you know, kind of stand out uh, quite uh, easily. Uh, and it means basically something in the middle. So M-E-D-I basically means being in the middle. And so meditation actually is keeping the mind in the middle uh, between these extremes. And of course, we do that through the practice of mindfulness. And there's four main dualities that, uh, which are specifically connected uh, with meditation uh, that we try to uh, you know, keep the mind in the middle between, not getting lost in one or the other. And the first one, the, probably the most important one, is uh, the past and the future. For most people's minds are constantly moving between the past and the future. Uh, and the past and the future are connected with pleasure and pain. Because ever since you were a baby, and everything that you experience as a child growing up and learning language, the mind has remembered these certain things bring me a pleasurable sensation, 
and other things bring a painful sensation. And uh, then we begin to uh, want uh, the pleasurable feelings again and again, or hoping that the objects that brought us a pleasurable feeling will come again. And the objects that bring us a painful feeling uh, don't come again. And so this is a program kind of into our minds ever since we're a small uh, child and uh, continue as we, we grow up. And so basically, you know, the, the past and the future and pleasure and pain are basically very intimately uh, connected. And, and that's how we, we go on even uh, in the present moment, strengthening these dualities. And so every time when we have that desire for something pleasurable, we increase the aversion uh, to pain. And the mind is you know, constantly moving back and, and forth between that. And all problems actually that you have are problems of the past and the future. And <clears throat> try to think of any problem that you might have and see if it's not connected with the past or the future in one way or another. You know, not getting what you wanted or getting what you uh, didn't want and so on. So these two, uh, these two dualities, past and the future, and pleasure and pain, uh, these are what in, in the meditation practice uh, we are trying to uh, you know, observe and how they are affecting our mind and through the practice of mindfulness by developing concentration uh, that we try to hold our mind uh, in the middle. And then there's two other dualities that the mind is also uh, affected by, and that is uh, the body and the mind. So some people get lost in their bodies, like people that are sort of uh, narcissistic personalities, or let's say, let's say, um, obvious examples, you know, people, bodybuilders that want to build up, uh, you know, a muscular body or uh, any way, uh, you know, absorbed in their looks and, uh, and wanting to impress people uh, through that. Uh, so some people are lost more in their bodies and other people are lost more in their mind. Uh, you know, intellectual types or people that are just constantly absorbed in their thoughts and fantasies uh, and, and so on. So even in meditation, in the practice of meditation, we try to find that middle path between uh, being lost in our body and lost in our thoughts. So in meditation, especially with the painful feelings uh, that arise in meditation. We try not to uh, get affected by that. We try to relax around them. We try to endure uh, discomfort and pain uh, as much as we can so that uh, our meditation can hopefully deepen. And we're continually letting go of our uh, thoughts so that the mind is remaining in the middle. And then the fourth of the dualities is self and others. So we're, you know, we're thinking about ourselves. What am I going to do? And you know, I, me, and mine thoughts connected with that. Or we're, you know, uh, uh, thinking about others. Uh, and so this is also the mind is constantly going back between self and others, or the body and the mind pleasure and pain and past and the future. So these are, you know, what the mind is going back and forth between even when we practice you know, meditation. Now, in order to find that middle path, again, the middle path is, is mindfulness. And uh, because as we understand, uh, you know, in the practice of mindfulness, especially the way the Buddha taught it and the four foundations of mindfulness, uh, we use uh, the breathing in the body 
as that connection to uh, the present moment. So the, the body is always in the present moment. It's always just here. And the breathing is going in and out. And whatever posture we're in, uh, whatever, whatever sensations in the body that are arising, those are occurring in the present moment. So we, we make those the focus of our attention. But in the beginning, we try to develop the concentration uh, on the breathing because it's kind of a neutral uh, sensation. And really, the, what I call the breathing body is the anchor uh, to the present moment. Just by continually remembering, breathing in, sitting, breathing out, sitting, breathing in, sitting, breathing out, sitting. Uh, you know, if you could uh, focus on, concentrate on that, uh, you know, for even just five minutes without any thoughts of the past or the future or reacting to pleasure and pain or any of the hindrances, then you would gain uh, the concentration. And concentration, even though there's a lot of talk about concentration and different ways people talk about concentration, really when you're, you're concentrating on an object, you know, it's an object in the present moment. So, and that's also mindfulness. And so when you're developing mindfulness of breathing, you're also developing uh, concentration. Uh, and <clears throat> a lot of people think that concentration is you focus on one tiny little object and you try to ignore other objects or, uh, you know, not pay attention to any other objects, whether it's uh, feeling the, the sensation, you know, at the tip of the nostrils or it's a uh, some other type of sensation or object, there's an idea out there that when you concentrate, it's, you try to focus and get absorbed, that's what they call it, absorption concentration, you get absorbed in an object where you basically lose awareness of other things. But uh, now that could happen, and you can do that kind of meditation, but it's, I don't think it's not really the, uh, the meditation that, uh, through the practice of mindfulness. So actually practicing mindfulness uh, leads to the concentration. That means leads to the uh, bringing the mind to the middle point, to the middle part. So by developing the mindfulness of breathing, mindfulness of posture, then the mind gradually you know, lets go. And by being mindful of all of those different dualities, you're continually letting them go. So the, you know, when you catch the mind thinking about the past, you try to let go of it, bring it back to the present moment of breathing. You catch the mind thinking about the future, you let go of that, and bring it back to the present moment of breathing or just uh, sitting. And then when you notice your mind uh, getting attracted to pleasurable thoughts or uh, sensations, then you notice how the mind is uh, going, getting, uh, you know, getting attached to that pleasurable feeling. And also you're aware of the unpleasant feelings that are starting to come up, especially the physical discomforts or pains associated with uh, you know, sitting for a longer period of time. And you, you keep uh, you know, relaxing around them, letting uh, them, them go and then be there in the background and coming back to uh, the middle path, which is the present moment of breathing in or breathing out. Those are the natural, uh, the middle path is the breathing or the posture. Uh, so the, uh, you know, the body is really the, the gateway to uh, finding, uh, coming back to the present uh, moment. And we use the concentration to, uh, you know, to get to the present moment. But the present moment itself is the state of being concentrated. 
Uh, that means it's resting in the present moment with awareness. And it's not reacting to any of the stimulations coming through the senses. But there's still awareness. It's not the, you know, you're still aware of things going on around you, but the mind is no longer thinking about them, no longer reacting to them. And that present moment awareness, the, the past and the future dissolves, and pleasure and pain dissolve, and self and others dissolve in, uh, in that present moment uh, awareness, because the world is basically created from thoughts of the past and the future. And even the thought of ourself is a thought of the past and the future. So the more we can keep the mind in the middle pot, uh, that's how we avoid all of those extremes, and that's how you can experience that uh, happiness of the present moment and which leads to all the deeper states of, uh, you know, meditation. And, uh, and you gain concentration through that. You can even gain the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, and fourth jhana simply by uh, practicing that mindfulness because in the mindfulness you're letting go of the hindrances and the hallmark of being concentrated is the suppression of the five hindrances. Uh, and that occurs, you know, we need the mindfulness in order to gain the concentration. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of back and forth uh, between different, you know, teachers and scholars about you know, and even talk about uh, the Noble Eightfold Path, you know, or the practicing meditation, you have to gain concentration first before you can practice Vipassana. There's some people who hold that view, and other people say, well, you can practice Vipassana without even attaining concentration. Uh, so, you know, those are two viewpoints. But if we really uh, examine the teachings of the Buddha, uh, we saw that it's, you know, it's balancing uh, the mindfulness and the concentration. Uh, and so, uh, when the mind is in the present moment, that is a concentrated uh, state. And because it's not, uh, all the hindrances have uh, subsided in that level. So, and, you know, the body is really the, the object that the, the Buddha started with. Because the body is always in the present moment. It's always here. And whatever sensations are occurring in the body, uh, then we, that's a training ground to, to let go of the, the painful ones, to let go of the, the pleasant ones, and to hold the, the mind in the middle. So, uh, you know, the middle path in the present moment, you know, those are very much... Uh, connected. Uh, so that's what basically I wanted to, uh, to share with you. But uh, so in the, you know, in the practice of meditation, as I've already mentioned, we're using the, the breathing body uh, as the anchor to the present moment. As I mentioned, the body is always in the present moment. And because it's a state of awareness. And so by gaining that, uh, and it's always with us, we always have the body with us all the time. And, and it's not uh, that difficult to notice. So that's why the Buddha had us uh, start out with that attention to uh, the breathing. Actually, the uh, concentration on the breathing helps to bring the attention to the body. And as you maintain that concentration on the breathing, then you, you start to feel more of the body uh, itself. And then that's where you start feeling the, the pleasant and painful uh, sensations that are connected you know, with the body, uh, especially the, the sensations of uh, discomfort and so on. So one of the primary uh, uh, aspects of meditation is learning how to observe those unpleasant sensations and to 
to understand how it's only our reaction to them uh, that uh, causes us distraction. We can learn to actually to observe unpleasant sensations, painful sensations, and actually learn how to even enjoy them <laughs> to a certain extent. Uh, because it's our reaction and it's our preconceived ideas that these things are unpleasant. But it's only because most people have a very uh, uh, weak tolerance to uh, discomfort. And we've gained this ever since we were a child. And uh, every little thing, you have a little itch on your face, and so you, you rub it to get away from it, or you, or you hear a sound, you turn your head to look at it, uh, and we get very easily distracted. But 90% uh, of the things that distract our mind or attention are nothing that's going to hurt us and really have, have no meaning. And so, and every time you react to something, you're reacting because it's something of the past and the future. So anyway, by keeping the mind, uh, you know, in the present moment, it helps us to see how easily our mind is being pulled uh, away from that. And then we have to deliberately uh, try to let go of those distractions and to keep the mind, uh, you know, connected by uh, maintaining that connection to uh, the breathing, then uh, you know, that's, that's always something we come back to. So, and that's what I wanted to uh, uh, you know, emphasize as, uh, you know, because it's only when we are able to you know, gain that kind of the middle path, understanding that the middle path is awareness, that we'll be able to, uh, you know, use that in our daily life and in the external world uh, as well. So, you know, the, the middle path is actually a vibration of our consciousness. And you can actually experience that once you develop a certain level of concentration. Uh, you can you know, get especially when you get concentrated, you can, you can be aware of that object of the concentration, but that object of the concentration is occurring within, uh, you know, a subtler uh, vibration, which is the vibration of the present moment awareness. And it's something that a lot of people you know, don't really uh, know because they haven't uh, paid attention to it. So, but uh, that's, uh, you know, pretty much what I, I wanted to mention, and we'll try to practice that in our meditation practice. And so if you have any, uh, you know, questions about that in our uh, questions and answers uh, session uh, afterwards, uh, then uh, you can ask any questions that you may have about that. And uh, so I... Maybe, uh, you know, keeping this uh, Dhamma talk a little bit uh, short, because I wanted to also, before we start our meditation, to, uh, to do a short uh, standing, to stand up, and uh, as I usually uh, do, uh, to, to kind of uh, guide you through a short uh, uh, breathing awareness, the body and breathing awareness to, to try to uh, feel that sort of present moment of the body and then sit down uh, to uh, meditate and then see if uh, that might uh, help you to keep uh, uh, you know, the mind more in the present moment. Okay? So... Uh, if you have a place there at home where you can kind of stand up, and uh, we're just going to do a, a short standing and breathing, and just a few simple little uh, exercises of moving the arms mostly, nothing uh, difficult, but it's uh, 
it's really a, a good way to get the mind to uh, come to the uh, present moment of the body uh, before you know you sit down to uh, practice me the meditation because it, it makes it easier. So I just wanted to see if uh, you know you could uh, get that experience. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and. Stand up, is Prashant here? No? Uh, I need to adjust my camera so people can see me. Uh, I want to stand here and I want to point the camera over so that it'll stand. Yeah. Is there at uh, those of you at home, if you can uh, see me, uh, just try to stand straight, relax your arms and shoulders and arms at the sides, just gently close your eyes. Just feel your eyes in the sockets. See if you can kind of feel the, the vague outline of the standing body. Just get a sense of your head on top. Your arms hanging at the side. Feeling your feet pressing the floor. And just mentally remind yourself of standing, standing, and just feeling the clothing touching the skin. And then begin some slow, deep breathing. Try to take two or three seconds to expand your lungs and chest, you hold the air in your lungs for two seconds to allow the oxygen to get out into the bloodstream, and then slowly breathe out. And just continue to take several more deep, slow breaths, just developing this present moment mindfulness. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, standing here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, standing here and now. Breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out, feeling the whole body. Now we're going to do a few simple little stretches to coordinate them with the breathing. You can open the eyes and kind of watch your screen and uh, lead you through these simple stretches. The idea is to keep the mind and the body and feeling the sensations generated by the stretching movements and the breathing. Just keep letting go of your thoughts. 
On the next in breath, raise the arms over the head. Interlock your fingers, turn the palms up, straighten your arms, stretch the arms up and stretch your head back to look at the back of your hands. On the out breath, turn the palms down and touch the top of your head on the out breath. The next in breath, again, palms up, straighten the arms, stretch the head back, bend back a little bit, feel the arch in the lower spine. Out breath, touch the top of the head. And the third time, hold that upward stretch longer. We'll bend back a little more. Feel the sensation. Now release your fingers on the out breath. Arms back to the sides. So you feel the sensations in your hands and fingers. Close the eyes, try to feel that outline of the body. You can't feel that, feel your hands and fingers. You increase pulsation, you feel your feet pressing the floor. You just remind yourself of standing, standing. Standing it's the present moment of the body, letting your thoughts come and go in the back of the mind. Feel the clothing touching the skin in different places. Those are all present moment sensation. Keep reminding yourself of standing, standing, standing. On the next in-breath, lift up on your toes while raising the hands over the head in this way, facing the hands toward each other and stretch up. On the out-breath, come back down, arms to the side, heels to the floor. Feel the sensation, especially in your hands and fingers. In breath and up. Use the breath to help lift up the body, stretch. Out. And once more, in breath. Stretch. Out. Let's close the eyes. Keep feeling the standing body. Try to feel the increased sensation. Any sensations on the surface of the skin, the clothing touching the skin. Pulsation in the hands or other places, prickly sensations on your face, any aches or pain. All those sensations are just occurring in the present moment. Mm. 
letting your thoughts come and go in the back of the mind. Just remember standing, standing, standing. Next, we're going to do side bending using both arms. On the in-breath, raise both arms up and keep your fingers and arms straight close to your head. On the out-breath, bend over your right side as far as you comfortably can. And keep your arms parallel to each other like railroad tracks. The in-breath, lift up. On the next out breath, bend over the left side. In breath up. Again to the right, out breath. In breath up. Out. In, once more to each side, out breath to the right. In breath, up. out breath, lift. In breath. On the out breath, lower both arms back. Feel the sensations, especially in your hands and fingers. Just close the eyes. Just feeling the body. I feel that vague outline of the standing body, the head on top, arms at the sides, clothing touching the skin, feet pressing the floor. Remember standing, standing, Letting go of your thoughts, the past and the future, present moment of standing. Sensation. And next we'll do head turning. On an in-breath, turn your head to the right as far as you comfortably can. And look over your right shoulder. And on the out breath, turn the head 180 degrees back to the left. And look over the left shoulder. In breath, back to the right. Concentrate into the neck vertebrae. Out breath, left. Feel the sensations in the neck. In breath, right. Out breath, left. On the in-breath, let the head stop in the center, just relax. Keep the eyes closed, try to feel that outline of the body, like a silhouette, feeling 
sensations from head, arm, clothing touching the skin, feet pressing the floor. Remember standing, standing. Now just one last exercise, stretching the head back and forward. On an in-breath, you lift the chin up. And on the out breath, stretch the head back and look up at the ceiling. On the in breath, lift the head up and kind of jut the chin out a little bit. And in the out breath, press the chin to that little notch at the top of the chest and stretch the neck vertebra. In the in breath, lift the chin up. Out breath, stretch the head back. In breath, lift the head up. Get the chin out, out breath, chin to the chest. Once more, in breath, lift the chin. Out breath, stretch the head back. In breath, lift the head up. Out breath, chin to the chest. And in breath, lift the chin up level. Keep the eyes closed. Feel the eyes in the sockets. From that point on the eyes, try to feel the outline of the standing body with all those life force present moment sensation. You can feel those, it's basically the vibration of the present moment. Present moment, body-centered awareness. Middle path. Present moment, awareness. Try to notice that, feel that. Okay, now let's come back to our seats and uh, get ready for the sitting meditation. Can you put the camera back to where it is? Turn these lights on. Those lights are off. So try to uh, get in a comfortable sitting position. <clears throat> Turn that light off over there. Try to uh, 
can sit straight and keep your spine and the head in a straight line. Just gently close your eyes. Just feel your eyes in the socket. Try to feel your head balanced on top of the neck. Again, from that point on the eyes, try to feel the outline of the sitting body. And begin taking some deep, slow breaths as we were doing in the yoga exercise. Just try to take two or three seconds to Expand your lungs and chest gently, don't strain at it. Just hold the air in the lungs for two seconds and slowly breathe out. Let's try to take several more deep, slow breaths, Just cultivating this basic mindfulness present moment mindfulness, breathing in, letting go of the past and future, breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out, feeling the whole body. Now we're going to count our breaths from one to ten. I'll do the counting for you. Just try to follow that with your breathing and your concentration. Keep your attention focused in the middle of the body. With the next expanding in breath, mentally count to one. Hold the air in one or two seconds. With the out breath, also count to one. You feel the last bit of air go out of the lung. Next in breath, two. Out breath, two. In three. Out three. In four. Out four. In five, out five, in. 
in six. Out six. In seven. Out seven. In eight, out eight, in nine. Out nine in ten out ten. Now just continue the counting. Let your breathing return to its uncontrolled, shorter, irregular rhythm. You continue to feel it. Just keep your attention focused in the center of the body. You feel the residual expanding and contracting movement. The abdomen, rib cage, or chest. Just make that the main focus of your present moment awareness, your concentration. Just knowing when the breath is coming in. And knowing when the breath is going out. And knowing is that alert awareness, present moment awareness of the breathing. It's mindfulness and concentration together. The present moment, Just breathing in, sitting, breathing out, sitting, make these mental reminders to help keep the attention focused. In, in, sitting. Out, out, sitting. Just remember that much. It's not much to remember. In, in, sitting. Out, out, sitting. The ongoing continuous present moment. 
of this body here and now. Keeping the awareness in the middle, sitting and breathing. Letting go of the past and future. Letting go of pleasure or pain. But to tune in to the four phases of each breath cycle. The expanding in breath and the brief pause. Contracting out in breath and the brief pause. In those pauses between the breaths, you feel the outline of the sitting body, vibrations of the present moment. Letting go of your thoughts, let the thoughts come and go in the back of the mind, keeping the sensations of the breathing body in the front of the awareness. We get caught up in thinking, recognize it as thinking, thinking, or lost, lost. Just let go of the thoughts, take a deep, slow breath, bring the mind back into the body, back to in, in, sitting. Out. Out, sitting, breath by breath, moment by moment.
Try to notice how each breath is different. Sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. Sometimes you feel the breathing more in the abdomen, sometimes you feel it in the rib cage, your chest. It's always changing. Sometimes the pauses between the breaths are longer or shorter. Try to feel the pauses between the breaths also. The pauses between the breaths, you can feel the vibration of the present moment. Try to keep feeling the breathing there in the middle of the body, feeling the larger body around the breathing. It's the breathing body. real natural home for this consciousness is the breathing body I keep feeling subtler and subtler sensations, vibrations in the breathing body. All those vibrations of the present moment.
You have too many thoughts, you come back and do some more kind of deep, slow breathing to help hold the tension in the center of the body. Be alert when the mind goes into any of those dualities. It thinks about the past or the future, pleasure or pain, self and other. Keep bringing it back to the middle, the middle path, the present moment. Awareness centered in the breathing body.
Breathing in, sitting. Breathing out, sitting. So many different sensations come and go. Pleasure and pain come and go. Sounds come and go. Perceptions, thoughts, emotions come and go. Thoughts of I, me, or mine, or others come and go. These are all just a continuous process of impermanence and change coming and going through the body and mind. The body is always just sitting and breathing, standing and breathing. This breathing body is the natural connection to the present moment. If we lose that connection to the breathing body, to the present moment, the mind gets easily distracted, carried away. Thoughts of the past and future, pleasure or pain, self and other the whirlwind of the neurotic mind this breathing body is always here and now it's always our reliable friend
what thoughts arise based on that sound vibration. Try not to let the mind rush to the future. Dukkha patta cha ni dukkha Bhaya patta cha ni bhaya Sokha patta cha ni sokha Hantu sabhi pipani no May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. In this way may all beings live with mindfulness and wisdom in the middle path. And thus spoke the Buddha. And now to finish this uh, meditation, I invite you to join in chanting the word sadhu. We do that chanting three times with the breathing. We do the chanting on a long out breath to try to feel those present moment vibrations in the body and mind. Let's take a deep breath. Sadhu 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 Now place your hands at the edge of your knees. Take one more deep breath. As you breathe in, stretch your head back. Pull the hands on your knees to arch your spine backward. And lift the head up on an in-breath, and on the out-breath, press the chin to the top of the chest, to stretch the neck vertebrae. And lift the chin up level on an in-breath, In the out breath, relax. I'm not getting the view of this touch screen, it's not working. Yeah. Now to get the spotlight back on it. This is not in the center, can you center that? So it's not so much. Yeah. 
Okay, friends, so I hope everybody was able to have uh, uh, at least some minutes or longer of the, some good awareness or concentration. Uh, so now uh, I want to open it up to see if uh, any of you have any questions if you would like to uh, ask about the meditation practice or other points of Dhamma, uh, anything I've talked about or some other questions that you might have, any comments about the meditations, uh, feel free to Sometimes they have these yellow hands that people put up, and I don't even know how to work those myself. I tried to do it before, it didn't work. So if anybody has any uh, questions, feel free to speak up, or do you want to mention anything, uh, Vivian, about that? Uh, no, I mean, if you'd like to ask a question, as, as Bhante said, you can unmute your mic yourself now. And so you can just go ahead and ask your question. Um, if you'd rather not speak in person, you can type your question into the chat channel and uh, we can, one of us can read it out. Okay, thank you. Don't be shy. So Bhante, um, I, I found it very helpful, the stretching um, and, you know, little exercises we did there um, before the meditation and just noticing that that helped to increase the awareness of the body um because it seemed that you one just became more aware of the um sensations in the body having done a little bit of movement and i found that very helpful um i do struggle a little bit with back pain with arthritis in the spine and so um, I'm never quite sure how much to sort of sitting can sometimes increase um, pain, um, that kind of pain. And I'm never quite sure how much to sort of push myself so to sit. So I have a tendency to um, do quite a bit of walking meditation these days and um standing meditation and i know that you said something about you know you said about pain you know getting used to pain and um um you know um you know paying attention to pain and then you can quite enjoy you know uh, or or I don't know, enjoys the word, but, but kind of, you know, just embrace pain and accept it. And I'm never quite sure how to get that balance right, because I don't want to get into a, a chronic pain situation, if you know what I mean. Yes. Uh, you know, basically, there's two types of pains uh, or you know the, the chronic and heavy pains that you have like the pain of a toothache or you know uh, pain in the, in the back or pain in the knees when you're sitting a long time 
uh, that kind of tend not to go away. Those are one thing. And then there's the other type of unpleasant sensations, which are like uh, itches, or sometimes you feel a stinging sensation in the body, or some other unpleasant sensations, like the, you know maybe the clothing uh, fitting too tight, or uh, the pain of the uh, heat or, or cold. Uh, but so we have to gradually, uh, we have to slowly increase our uh, tolerance of pain because that's a given in life. We'll never become free from pain as long as you have a body. Uh, but we, we have to gradually increase our pain tolerance. So we can start by especially observing the, the more minor kinds of uh, pains and itchy feelings, stinging sensations, biting sensations, or other uh, things that come and go. So you, uh, you know, there's a whole like pain, you might say, is on a scale from one to 10. And, uh, and so chronic pains are, you know, harder to to deal with because they don't seem to change. But uh, you have to start out tolerating the smaller ones. And the, normally people don't even tolerate an itch, right? When you get an itch, you immediately want to scratch or, uh, you know, something else, you rub this or rub that. And people are always doing that because, uh, but if you learn to observe those, because those are not really painful, they're just irritation. But our mind thinks that they're uh, painful. And, and if you relax around them and learn how to just observe those more minor irritations, uh, then actually you can enjoy observing those. Or even a fly lands on you and, and just observe the sensations of a, a fly, you know, going into your ear or into your nose or somewhere else or, uh, you know, mosquitoes. Uh, none of these things are going to really kill us or harm us, uh, but we just don't like them. So we react to them. And so uh, that's what we have to train ourselves in learning how to endure and not react to those. So when stronger pains then do come up, we'll be in a better position to tolerate those a little bit uh, longer before eventually moving. And if you do need to move, just try to do it mindfully and not to, to be in a hurry to uh, change your posture, for example. Just mindfully, uh, you know, uh, move, uh, change the posture, and then come back to your meditation and try to endure it a little bit longer. But at some point, you can stand up, as you already mentioned. So when, you know, you get to that point, but you try to increase let's say the tolerance to the pain, uh, you know, 30 seconds or a minute longer each time before gradually changing. Uh, and then at some point, you, you know, you can stand up. You can get very concentrated even doing standing meditation. And of course, walking, but in standing, you're, you're standing still so you actually can get more concentrated standing and uh, it can produce a very good awareness in standing because you can't go to sleep while standing and most of the standing isn't too painful uh, and you can feel a lot of sensation so it helps you to stay in the present moment. But you can do standing and walking and you can come back and then sit again uh, you know, later. Thank you. But the reason why I uh, have people do the, uh, the movements, the breathing, it's like some standing exercises before sitting, we will do this tomorrow also in the day of mindfulness, is because it helps to generate, as you mentioned, more sensations in the body. And the reason why it helps you to stay focused, because all those sensations are occurring in the present moment. And largely, there are pleasant sensations. 
you know, a lot of them, there's a lot of pleasant sensations in the body. Most people only react to the painful ones, but because they don't know how to feel the pleasant ones, because they're too busy trying to react to the unpleasant ones, that they miss the pleasant ones. And, or you don't have a lot of sensations in the body. People don't uh, do the proper exercise, so if you're stiff and the joints are not flexible, this, uh, uh, you know, blocks sort of the flow of life force in the body. And it's really the, the flow of the life force in the body and also the oxygen. The deep, slow breathing helps to get more oxygen into the bloodstream, and that is taken out to, to bathe all the cells of the body, so they, they have more vibration. And when you combine the breathing with the movements, that helps to, to really, like, you know, uh, charge up the cells of the body with this uh, life force. And, and so you feel those vibrations, and those are vibrations of the present moment. And they're very pleasant. Once you can learn how to, to tune into them. And doing deep, slow breathing actually is one of the best ways to do that. But it's not very emphasized, you know, amongst, especially amongst Buddhist meditators, because they have this idea that you shouldn't control the breathing and you should just focus on a tiny spot. But that's, that's only a one-sided approach uh, to a meditation. Uh, and they miss a lot. So... In fact, that's why, you know, you can see my name there. Or part of my name says Yoga Vachra, right? That's because sort of my specialty was integrating uh, certain types of yoga practice, uh, especially breathing and uh, stretching movements, uh, in order to get that benefit from it. It helps you to stay to more grounded in the body because that's where the world arises. And... And there's a, uh, those, once you can feel those subtler, pleasant sensations, it helps you to stay concentrated. And you can get into the first jhana even by feeling, staying just absorbed in those uh, pleasant sensations. It's part of the piti and the sukha. If you've you know, you know, read the suttas and you hear about the jhanic factors when people develop concentration, they experience piti and sukha. Really, a larger part of that is the, the subtle vibrations that you're feeling, the present moment vibrations that come out when the mind is concentrated. But a lot of people don't see it that way because they, they haven't reflected on it that way or use that as a, as a helpful means to, uh, to keep the mind centered in, in the present moment. In the, in the practice tomorrow, the day of mindfulness, I'll be, uh, you know, mentioning that and having, you know, trying to keep your attention uh, coming back to that uh, from time to time. What? Oh. Uh, what if we feel a lot of vibrations and sensations? and a lot of subtle sensations, well, what if they're unpleasant? What do we do? Just feel them. They're not going to kill you. Just relax around them. Just see them as life force. You know, it's part of the body. If they're not like super, super number nine or ten chronic pains, then you can just open up to that. Don't uh, fight them. That's what creates the suffering is the resistance to the pain. Most pain is the reaction our mind is giving to the sensation, not the actual sensation itself. So it's important to understand that and to, uh, when you're feeling that, to, to reflect on that and keep relaxing around it and try not to feed this idea that this is a painful sensation and feel other sensations. There's always a ton of sensations within the body you can notice. You know, the subtle pulse of, in your fingers or hands, even feeling the eyes and the sockets. There's a lot of places in the body where the sensations can be strong if you focus on them, and it will help you to keep your mind from getting sucked into other type of uh, 
sensation. But we've never been trained in that. But so it's a specific part of the, the meditation training. Uh, is that all? Where would that chat go? Oh, oh, okay. I see a yellow hand up there. Nisanka, you have a question? Uh, unmute yourself, Nisanka. In, in your Dhamma talk, you were talking about pressure and pain. Uh, sorry, first um, past and future, pressure and pain. Um, self and other, and the other one was um, um, the body and the mind. Body and mind. <coughs> is, is there any uh, any relation between these? No? Any relation? What What is the relation between them? Yes. I can. Well, <laughs> they're the dualities. I mean, people get lost in them. You know, they, they, they get lost in the past and the future, thinking about their, their body or thinking about their mind. Uh, and, and of course, between pleasure and pain, the past and the future, they're all intimately really tied into each other. Everything is also comes back to ourself. Whenever we think about a feeling, a pleasant or painful feeling, it's about our uh, experience of that from the past or the future. You, you can't get away from it. Uh, past and future, pleasure, pain, self and others, these are all based on that phenomenon of, of the mind. Uh, they're connected to the past and the future. Uh, the only way we know about ourselves is from the past. What I did yesterday, last week, last month, when I was a child, I went on you know, this vacation, that vacation, and then you know the, the all the people that you've known in your life, and of course yourself, all the things that you've done, what you want to do in the future, uh, and the objects that are going to bring you uh, pleasure in the in the future, or objects, things that you fear about are going to happen in in the future. This is what keeps the mind spinning around. This is sansara. Sansara is simply the mind that is spinning around with, you know, its thoughts and worries about uh, the past and the future, not getting what you want in the future, or having fear of what's going to come to you uh, in, in the future. But that's based on, uh, on the past experience. And that's the whole life revolves around that. And the whole Buddhist, the Buddhist teaching is, is about how to understand that and know that it's, it's occurring within the mind. I mean, we live, you know, we really live in the mind. Uh, we live in our thoughts. Because any thought you have is a thought that's, I mean, basically, there's just the present moment. Now, any, think of something from the past. Okay, that's a thought in your mind now, in the present moment. Think of something in the future. That's a thought in your mind now, in the present moment. So there actually, there's only the present moment. And 
you know, the past and the future are, you know, just thoughts in our mind. And a lot of times we, we create unnecessary worry, thinking about what's going to come in the past, uh, pa uh, come to us in the future, or not coming to us in the future. And uh, a lot of times that never pans out. You know, uh, how many times have you, uh, you know, thought about something unpleasant happening to you, uh, it's going to happen to you, and you worry, oh, I hope that that person doesn't come here, I hope that doesn't happen, and this and that, or, you know, if something happens in your body and you get worried, and, you know, what's going to happen, you go to the doctor, and they say, there's nothing wrong, I don't see anything, you know. I mean, we spend so much time worrying about, <laughs> you know, the past and the future uh, when there's nothing much we can do about it anyway. Of course, you can manage the future to some extent, but uh, still, the idea is to, you know, to understand how, you know, our mind creates unnecessary uh, worries about things that we cannot ultimately uh, uh, control. And if you just relax in the present moment, things usually work out. Because anyway, we're we're all going to get old and and die and have pain, and there's nothing anybody can really do about that. And so you have to just relax and accept whatever happens. Uh, you know, that's arising in the present moment, uh, for the most part. Thank you, Bhante. How did you get that yellow hand to come up? I, I tried getting the yellow hand to, on my computer when I was on, and I, I could never get that yellow hand to come up. So I always had to go like this. And I saw yellow hands on everybody else, and I couldn't get my yellow hand to come up. And the reactions one. You never taught me that, for sure. And the, and the reactions? If you go to reactions? Yeah, reactions. I go to reactions. And yeah. then there is a top yeah. line in my computer. It didn't come out on the screen. Then you'll press it. Yeah, I, I did that. I used to do that. But... Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Yes, as Nisanka said, you click on re reactions and then you get a pop-up menu. And one of the things on the menu is raise hand. Yeah, and I clicked that a lot when I was on another Zoom program and I wanted to ask a question. I kept on clicking and it didn't go up on the screen. Hmm. I had to just raise my hand like this. Then the person saw me and called on me. <laughs> anyway. Uh, well, we might have time for one more question or something. Oh, wait. wait. Okay, this was a person uh, had another comment on the chat. When you see all this spinning around of the mind, life becomes very meaningless and very futile. The sansara seems futile. What do we do then? Practice Dhamma. You know, there's a saying, less drama and more Dhamma. So our mind creates this drama. It's self-created drama for the most part. Sure, things might be happening around in our life, but the way, the way we react to it is creating a lot of unnecessary uh, drama. And the whole, that's the whole practice of the Dhamma. Uh, is use all the different uh, teachings that we find within the Dhamma, you know, the Noble Eightfold Path, the right effort, the practice of mindfulness, right speech, right action, observing precepts, uh, developing wholesome qualities, learning how to 
you know, apply the right effort to let go of negative mental states. But we have to recognize the, men the negative mental states first in order to let go of them. And, uh, and that's why mindfulness is so important and right understanding. So, yeah, I mean, essentially, life is kind of meaningless if, if all you're living your life for is to, you know, eat, drink, and be merry and, and uh, just do a lot of things and then die. I mean, uh, from the Dhamma point of view, that's kind of meaningless. But to give meaning in the life is when you actually make progress in uh, strengthening your consciousness and developing what we mo most people would kind of you know consider like the, the spiritual path, not so uh, uh, caught up and dependent on the external world for our our happiness and so on and learning how to touch base with our deeper awareness you know that's what gives meaning to the life and the mind uh, so okay friends uh, so I hope some of you will be able to attend our day of mindfulness uh, tomorrow and uh, we'll continue uh, discussing some of these things in the practice. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Bante. Thank you very much, Bante. Um, uh, thank you for your very helpful Dharma talk and guided meditation and guidance. And uh, we look forward very much to seeing you in the morning. Um, the day of mindfulness starts at 8.45. You can join the meeting at 8.30. And uh, um, we hope to see some of you then. And perhaps we could just end this evening by paying our respects to you by bowing three times. May you be well, happy and peaceful. May all your hopes and wishes succeed. May you attain freedom from suffering in this very life. May so, all beings so, be so. well, peaceful and wise. In mindfulness, the day keeps dukkha away. All right. Thank you, Bante. Good night. Thank you, Bante. 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 You're welcome. Thank you, Bante.